So I've picked up a Flysky FST6 controller here. I picked it up off eBay for £42 um, English and uh, free shipping. So it really is at the uh, bottom bargain basement of the category for one of these. But uh, it has got quite good reviews. You know, it, yes, it is made of plastic. Most of the buttons are all plastic. This uh, on the joysticks here is some kind of alloy and uh, these are actually metal switches here but uh, the rest of it is plastic but one thing that a lot of people moan about is the range now what I thought we'd do is actually remove the stock rubber duck antenna here and swap it out with a bulkhead connector and that will allow us to uh, add any antenna that we actually want on this and uh, hopefully it'll fix uh, some of those range issues so to actually get into the unit it seems quite straightforward it's just these four phillips head screws holding it in place here and uh, there doesn't seem to be any screws underneath these labels here so i've opened the unit up and it was as i suspected just held in place with those four phillips head screws there and they're just self tappers going down onto these uh, plastic risers here there's uh, no metal in there so you probably don't want to go uh, screwing this and unscrewing it quite often otherwise uh, you'll wear down the plastic there but uh, other than that it just seems uh, a typical cheap uh, construction here I mean uh, I've seen quite a few threads on forums where people have modified the batteries on this to take a lithium uh, rechargeable battery pack and you've just got these two terminals coming from the battery pack here and uh, going straight onto this uh, board here so that looks quite an easy mod modification to do in the future. And like I said, this is a bargain basement unit and uh, you obviously get what you pay for. And normally it's down to actual uh, construction and uh, quality control checks. And uh, as you can see here, I've got this PCB here and uh, it's uh, attached down there and it looks uh, quite straight. But you go over to the other side and you've got the same PCB board there and it looks cockeyed as if it's been... Uh, dropped but it hasn't it's in there quite solid it's probably just been attached that way in the factory and generally it just uh, looks cheap and uh, well the soldering looks quite good quality soldering but uh, whether this will last you any real length of time of use I don't know but uh, it's good enough to get me up and running anyway I think so the part I'm interested in is just here and you've got your coax coming in here and it's just soldered in place there on those two solder points so it's going to be really easy to modify and uh, change out so what I'll do I'll get the macro lens on desolder this and then we'll take a closer look at the stock antenna that actually uh, comes with the unit I uh, suspect it's probably a uh, half wave dipole a quarter wave stacked on top of a quarter wave so uh, it's gonna be one of those real cheap old ones for about uh, gives you about 2.5 dB gain so definitely swapping it out is going to improve things so as you can see here, the uh, actual coax is soldered onto these uh, two solder pads here. You've got the center connector of the coax, the signal wire soldered onto this pad here, and you've got your ground plane soldered onto this pad here. So I'm just going to desolder the ground plane first, and then uh, put a little bit of heat on this pad, and hopefully free up the uh, signal wire. I want to be really careful, because I don't want to rip off any of these pads, because they are extremely small. So I've desoldered the old coax away and uh, I've just gone in there and cleaned up the two solder pads here and here, ready to solder our new coax in place. So I'm going to remove this uh, dipole antenna that's uh, connected to the unit and it looks like it's held in place by a Phillips screw here and a Phillips screw down in there. And this coax will just pull out straight through this hole here in the PCB. So what I'm going to actually upgrade to is one of these RPSMA bulkhead connectors it's the uh, female type with the center pin there and uh, it's crimped onto some RG316 which is slightly thicker than uh, the coax that was there before but uh, we shouldn't have any problem soldering it in place and uh, what I was actually gonna do here is um, cut off this part of the housing away and uh, reconnect that back to the transmitter and mount the bulkhead connector in the top there so we can screw in whatever kind of antennas we want here at the top but uh, what I've actually discovered is down in here is this uh, base here which all this actually uh, connected to I'm just going to put the uh, bulkhead connector through there and tighten it up with its uh, nuts and it should hold it in place and uh, should uh, look a pretty neat job when we've uh, actually finished
So there's the uh, SMA connector in place and I've only hand tightened it so far but uh, I'm quite pleased uh, how that looks. It's going to look uh, quite professional and uh, not look out of place at all. So like I say I'm not going to modify this. This looks uh, a little bit better and it's worked out quite well. So one other thing I'm going to have to do here to modify this is I'm going to have to drill a slightly bigger hole through this PCB here to get the uh, RG316 through and up and then to solder it in place here and uh, it's no problem drilling through this this underneath here is just one big ground plane so I've stripped back the coax tinned it up ready to uh, solder into place and I'm just going to lay it down like so and uh, I'm going to actually solder it down onto the pad plus onto this uh, shield as well which again will all be connected to ground and once that's soldered in place I'll go in there and then solder the centre pin in place. And of course uh, soldering onto this uh, ground plane uh, shield as well will also uh, give it some uh, strain relief so it'll be in there good and solid once it's soldered in place. So hopefully you can see now that the outer braid actually soldered down onto the pad and up against this uh, shield in here just to uh, give it some strength and then once that was soldered in place I manoeuvred the centre pin into place and then soldered it down to its uh, solder point here. So it has been quite a uh, straightforward mod so I'm just going to tighten this nut up here now and then uh, put the cover back on and uh, then we're about done. So I'm pretty pleased how this has uh, turned out. It's a pretty straightforward modification changing uh, the antenna on there putting yourself a bulkhead SMA connector on so you can put whatever antenna you want on the top there and uh, you know, I didn't have to use the gem Dremel really, only to widen that hole so I could fit the RG316 coax through it. So I didn't have to modify this in any way and uh, didn't have to use any hot glue, which makes a change. And if you're wondering what the original antenna looks like, it's here. It's just a uh, quarter wave and a quarter wave, half wave dipole antenna, one of the uh, really cheap ones with the uh, little bit of coax wire sticking out the top here and uh, when I did pull it apart it did actually fall apart as well so uh, not very good quality so I hope you enjoyed that video and you have a go at uh, doing this yourself and uh, if it increases your range then uh, please drop a comment and let us know and hopefully you'll join me on the next one